Hey everybody, we're going to have some fun to start. We have the Palm Sunday scenes from both 70s Passion Week musicals, Godspell and Jesus Christ Superstar. We do not have a pit orchestra, right? So it's mostly trumpets, right? But we don't have trumpets. So we're going to do the, the Palm Sunday, the, the entry scenes from both Godspell and uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. So if you know these choruses, uh, please sing with us. Uh, Day by day. Tell the rabble to be quiet. We anticipate a riot. This common crowd is much too loud. 
Tell the mob who sing your song that they are fools and they are wrong. They are a curse. They should disperse. Hosanna, oh, hey, Zana, 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 ho, Zana, hey, Zana, ho, Zana. Hey, JC, JC, you're all right by me. Zana, hey, Zana, hey, superstar. Why waste your breath moaning at the crowd? Nothing can be done to stop the shouting. If every tongue were still, the noise would still continue. The rocks and stones themselves would start to sing. Hosanna, oh, hey, Zana, 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 ho. Zana, hey, Zana, ho. Zana. Hey, JC, JC, won't you fight for me? Zana, hey, Zana, ho. Superstar, sing me a song, but not for me alone. Sing out for yourselves, for you are blessed. There is not one of you who cannot win the kingdom. The slow, the suffering, the quick, the dead. Hosanna, hey, Zana, 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 ho, Zana, hey, Zana, ho, Zana. Hey, JC, JC, won't you die for me? Zana, hey, Zana, ho, superstar. Thank you for the indulgence of my musical theater love. Uh, so we have two uh, 70s, remarkably, at the same time, very different operas written about Palm Sunday and Holy Week through the crucifixion and the resurrection. Welcome to worship this morning on this Palm Sunday uh, Sunday celebration. As we begin Holy Week uh, with the mark of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, welcome at home. We are glad that you are with us at Facebook Live and have found us throughout the week on our YouTube channel. We are glad that you are here too. We appreciate the effort that it takes to set aside uh, time to be with us at home when you really don't have to. Uh, so we really like uh, that you are here and listening with us. Welcome to worship this morning. We are glad that you are here. We are using words, uh, again, um, provided by... Uh, Sanctified Art, uh, a program that uh, we're using for liturgy this morning, and they uh, are getting us into this scene this morning. They are uh, getting us present. Our goal today uh, is to get ourselves as, as present as we can be in this moment uh, in Jerusalem, uh, coming into uh, Jerusalem with Jesus. And they have offered us uh, these words as a call to worship as we are uh, people of the outskirts of Jerusalem uh, witnessing what is happening. So the theater continues uh, this morning uh, with our theme. Where is he going? Isn't he from Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Is he headed to Jerusalem? Do you think Jerusalem is safe? Does he know Pilate is here? Where is he going? Does he know the city is dangerous? Does he see the Pharisees watching? Is this the one we've been waiting for? Could this be the Messiah? Where is he going? The crowds are singing, Hosanna. Should I lay down my cloak? Is this the beginning of the end? Should we follow? Should we watch? Should we sing Hosanna? Stay awake. He's on the move. Where is he going? Listen. Where is he going? Watch. Where is he going? Stay close. Where is he going? Sing Hosanna. 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 Amen. Amen. Because there's something in the air. 
to follow this morning, but I want to take a moment to welcome you here. We are glad for those of you who are in the sanctuary that you were able to join us today, and to those of you viewing from home, we are glad you are joining us as well. At this time, please join me in the welcoming affirmation. Whatever your race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, or economic situation, you are welcome here. Whatever your age or ability, background or belief, I am welcome here. Whatever your relationship status or family structure, we are welcome here. No matter who you are or what you've done, I welcome you in the name of Christ. At this time, please take a moment to share a welcome together in Christ's name. If you were a teenager in the 70s, we have you covered today. Cat Stevens. This is what happens to our microphone when I have to speak loudly to get your attention. You might remember this from Cat Stevens, but it was in our hymnal before Cat Stevens. Morning has broken. Our opening hymn this morning. Let us stand as we sing.
Our second praise hymn this morning is number 162 in your red hymnals uh, in front of you, around you. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Let us sing. You may be seated, please. Uh, the lectionary uh, that I um, purchased and, and I'm using for uh, our uh, Lenten experience this, uh, this season has given us some prayers and some liturgies to say together. We now enter into a time of, of confession and an asking of forgiveness and repentance together. I'm going to invite you to read the uh, the bold and italicized uh, portions uh, on the slides behind me as we uh, join in a moment of confession, pardon, and repentance. For today's prayer of confession, we are going to read through the Palm Sunday story together from the Gospel of Matthew. As we read through the story, we will pause to admit the places where we so often and so easily could change the narrative. So read with me, trusting that no matter what we do or don't do, the story ends with love. Let us pray. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. God, forgive us for the times when we do not trust your word and do not follow where you lead. We long to be the ones who can go into the village ahead of you. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your, come, your king comes to you gentle, 
and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. God, forgive us for forgetting that you are always coming toward us. You are drawing near like a king on a donkey. Help us find us you in your, our midst. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their co- cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Creator God, Forgive us for the moments when we choose greed over generosity or when we choose our self-image over our loyalty to you. Give us the courage to be unabashed in our faith. Give us the strength to throw our coats on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Son of David, give us the conviction to shout your name from the rooftop. Give us the wisdom to sing Hosanna. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. family of faith, there will be days when we withhold our praise. There will be days when we dare not follow. There will be days when we ignore God's call, when we choose comfort over courage and ourselves over others. But even on those days, even on our worst days, we belong to God. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Nothing can separate us from God's love. We are loved, forgiven, and sent out to serve. Hosanna. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, let us sing number 347, Spirit Song. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let it fill your heart with gladness by your soul. Oh, give Him all the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove. will descend upon your life and make you Let us pray.
almighty and everlasting God. We give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for all the ways that you have been with us already this morning that we have experienced in your fellowship, in a service as a community together. We give you thanks for the relationships and connections and conversations that have already taken place in this worship. Open us to the ways in which you have moved among us and within us and through us already today. That we don't set aside this time specifically to be with you. But that you make us aware of your presence and your spirit and your power with us. in all places, at all times. May this time that we share together only be different from all those other times because we are together. We are in community now to experience this triumphal arrival didn't actually take a a, a prophet or the Son of God to know what was going to happen to you if you came to Jerusalem this week. And yet here you come. Help us to prepare for this Holy Week experience, to, to walk alongside you through these days. Maybe to not wonder what we might get out of this experience. Maybe to not wonder what what this week has to say to us. But just to be near you, next to you, walking through this week. Help us to be there with your disciples as this Christian faith is born. God, we give you thanks for the callings that you have placed on the heart of this congregation to to be of service in our community and in our town. We give you thanks for all of the ways in which that has manifested itself. We pray uh, for uh, Turning Point Day Center. We pray for uh, its staff and and volunteers and its partners and its supporters. We pray for uh, our friends and partners at Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen. We give you thanks for another season uh, of, of room at the inn. We give you thanks for uh, all the ways that you that w- ha- we have been provided for this season and uh, the, the opening of new spaces and, and the, uh, the, just how that worked out. And we give you thanks that room at the inn did not have to move every two weeks this winter. We pray for and as and, and because of and all of those things be, for this network of which we are a part that strives to walk with people in their most challenging moments. We pray that this place be truly the, the place where you can come as you are. We give you thanks this day. We pray for your presence and spirit to be with us and among us, to be in us, to work through us as we experience this week together. We pray now in 
hopes of the illumination of your holy word. Sometimes it's hard to hear you over the hosannas. Sometimes it's hard to hear you over the noise of city streets. Sometimes it's hard to hear you over our racing thoughts, our mental to-do lists, and our desire to fit in. Sometimes it is hard to hear you in this noisy world. So just as you stopped traffic in Jerusalem, stop traffic here. Pause the rush. Open the gates. Dwell among us until your word is all we can hear. We are listening. And we are laying down our cloaks. And now we join together in the prayer uh, that you taught us to pray by saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, we are staying with John, and we are staying with the message. Uh, here is the message, Eugene Peterson's uh, version of uh, the first half of John chapter 12. Six days before Passover, Jesus entered Bethany where Lazarus, so recently raised from the dead, was living. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oil, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet, and then wiped them with her hair. The fragrance of the oil filled the house. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, even then getting ready to betray him, said, Why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would have easily brought 300 silver pieces. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but he also embezzled them. Jesus said, let her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. Word got out among the Jews that he was back in town. The people came to take a look not only at Jesus, but also at Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. So the high priest plotted to kill Lazarus because so many of the Jews were going over and believing in Jesus on account of him. The next day, the huge crowd that had arrived for the feast heard that Jesus was entering Jerusalem. They broke off palm branches and went out to meet him, and they cheered, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Yes, the King of Israel. Jesus got a young donkey and rode it just as the scripture has it. No fear, daughter Zion, see how your king comes, riding a donkey's colt. The disciples didn't notice the fulfillment of many scriptures at the time, but after Jesus was glorified, they remembered that what was written about him matched what was done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, was there giving eyewitness accounts. It was because they had spread the word of this latest God sign that the crowd swelled to a welcoming parade. The Pharisees took one look and threw up their hands. It's out of control. The world's in a stampede after him. The Bible does not say cared two thumbs about the poor. That's Eugene Peterson. It's how you can tell it is a interpretation and not a translation. I'm surprised it didn't say care to wit, something like that, right? Uh, I wanna, I'm gonna, going to ask you a question, and I expect you, an answer from you guys. So I want you to speak. I'm giving you permission. Uh, who is the most famous person you've ever met? 50 Cent. Lisa still wins. We'll go back to Lisa after if anybody can say anybody cooler than Lisa. Who's the most famous person you've ever met? Brad Pitt. Yikes. Okay. 
Nobel Prize winner. We have a Nobel Prize winner in Columbia. So if that counts, then Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay, well, Lisa rode in an elevator with Robert Plant, uh, the lead singer of Led Zeppelin. So Lisa wins. What I really want to do here this morning and this week is to get to get ourselves into this scene. Is to put ourselves here. I mean, that's why I, I wanted to have some fun this morning because I knew Jay wasn't here and I, we could mess around with the music. Um, but it's why I, I started with musical theater. I wanted us to stage this week because I don't, I don't, I still don't think we can get there. Just reading the reading the scripture, I think somewhere in our through our modern world lenses, we're, we are somewhere in our picture of this day. There are cell phones, there are trolleys, there are cars. There, it's, but this was two thousand years ago in the ancient Middle East, and I and I don't think we can read it through that lens. We think of Palm Sunday. This is this is parade time, right? And there are there's orange cones marking off the streets and the disciples are tossing out candy to the kids. And it's just that that's not what happened. This, this is just this stylized, ritualized version of what Palm Sunday was. I want us to try to see this day from the average Joe citizen of Jerusalem. And in that moment, this is just the most famous person these people had ever heard of coming to town. Jesus is coming from Bethany. Am I over here. Bethany is a suburb of uh, Jerusalem still. I mean, Beth, there, Bethpage and Bethany still exist. This, this over here is from uh, the Gospel of Mark, which we did not read this morning. Uh, in John... Uh, Jesus stays with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. In the other Gospels, Jesus stays with Simon the leper, who doesn't show up anywhere else in uh, the Old Testament. So uh, Jesus is walking down this road into the temple. He's walking down this road. It's still a road. You can walk it today. This is a real thing. This is not a stage show. People have walked it already this morning in commemoration of Palm Sunday. And I'm a really big fan of the monk's robes and baseball cap look. I mean, this, this procession has already happened uh, in Jerusalem for Palm Sunday this morning. They were walking down that road to this gate. It still exists. You can still see it. All this stuff is real. It's still a part of everyday life in Jerusalem. And I've, I've been there. I've walked down this road. I mean, I was 10 years old, but I was there. And this is where we can't, we can't see this experience uh, outside of modern life. The spontaneous arrival of the most famous person in the world is almost impossible now. First of all, when they go anywhere, they don't tell anybody. Right? They don't announce it. They don't want to. But also, to, to you know, maybe you have a memory of, of somebody coming through town. Right? I think um, was it, they used to have, like, ca presidential candidates had, like, train tours. Was it tr wasn't it Truman that had, like, a train tour just hanging out the back of a caboose coming to town and see Harry, at, see Harry Truman? The most famous person to just come through town, right? The most famous person I have ever met is Dan Quisenberry. Anybody? No. Huh? A Royals pitcher with, an un with a sidearm that was almost underhanded, right? Impossible pitch to hit. But he was fishing. He was fishing in Warsaw, and he came into the diner. And, so, and he's not, nobody knows who Dan Quisenberry is, right? But that's the most famous person I've seen. I remember um, they, they came to uh, the campus of Central Methodist College to shoot a movie, like a, a B movie, uh, when, I, when I was there. Um, and it was, like, it was like the Pope came to town. Um, but the 
Pope turned out to be the kid from Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. It wasn't the Pope. It was <laughs> the kid from Sling Blade was the star of this movie. But like com- uh, shooting a movie in Fayette, Missouri was huge and on our campus. I mean, Winston Churchill came to Fulton one time, and it's like their whole deal over there. Winston Churchill came here once. It was like uh, Fulton's whole identity. It's a big deal. It's, ex- it's impossible to ex- experience the spontaneity of Palm Sunday now. No announcement, no special event, no PR. There was no event attached to this. It Jesus was just coming to town. And somehow, word got out. Still, no text messages, no social media, no one was calling neighbor to neighbor, but word got around that Jesus was coming down this hill. There's something going on in town. You can almost feel it, right, before you see it. Before you hear it, there's, there's an energy that something is in the air. Something is happening. And then your neighbors start peeling off, right? And if you see somebody, like, drop their gardening stuff and, and walk up the hill craning their necks to see what, you're going to go see them, too. You're going to follow them. Somebody sees you do it, and they, and they follow you, and so on and so on. It's hard to miss that something is happening. These are the people of Bethany, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, the disciples, Jesus, all coming around this corner through the garden at the top of the Mount of Olives that we saw. And then things get real interesting because the name Jesus starts getting tossed around and whispered from person to person. This, this, is, this is the guy. He healed a blind man. This, and this is both guys. Jesus and Lazarus. Both of whom, the chief priests and the leaders of the temple, wanted to kill because of what they represented. And here they, and here they come. And here's where church really gets in the way of Palm Sunday. Nothing that happened next was planned. This was not a staged event. This was not a musical where everybody broke out into song and somehow magically everybody knew the words to the song that everybody was going to sing. This isn't Palm Sunday flash mob where everything was organized in advance. And they weren't singing hymns or quoting scripture. They shouted Hosanna, which to us sounds like how Don read it. Hosanna! But was actually Hosanna. Because Hosanna means save us. They weren't saying praise Jesus. They weren't singing hallelujah. They were shouting, save us. And the gospel writers really wanted that to stick. Because in all four versions, the word in the oldest text we have is Hosanna. Hosanna is a Hebrew word. So all of the rest of the gospel is written in ancient Greek. And this word is still in ancient Hebrew. The writers wanted us to know that these people were chanting, save us. You're you're Yahweh's guide. You're this king, this You've healed the blind man. You've raised Lazarus from the dead. Save us. This is an expression of deep pain and hope and expectation. If you come in Yahweh's name, save us. 
and they didn't come prepared. They didn't. We have, Janet was nice enough to give us to give us this bundle of palms this morning. It's not how it happened, by the way. They didn't show up with bundles of palms to see Jesus. They recognized this for it as a moment, and they used what they had on them. They took their own outer layers off and put it on the colt and on the foal, and they put it on uh, the ground as tradition states that an arriving dignitary's convoy doesn't actually touch the ground of the road on their way into town. They cut palm, palm branches off the trees around them, and no one brought them with them because the palm branch was a national symbol used when Israel returned from exile. We have texts of other processions into Jerusalem where palm branches are waved and and placed on the path. Most notably in the books of Maccabees where the tradition of of Hanukkah uh, and Yom Kippur comes out of the books of Maccabees are in the thicker Bibles on your shelves, right? That, has, that say the Apocrypha on the front of them. Uh, they're not in your read for, read for devotion Bibles. They're in your study Bible. Maccabees 1 through 4 talks about the palm branches. They just, they knew this was a moment and they used what was around them. And all of this Every action here that we think of now as the big production of Holy Week and Palm Sunday was spontaneous, was organic, was, was an expression of hope and need, a catharsis. And it carried with it all the pain of, and, and hope of the past. This was the new Moses and the new Exodus, a new deliverance from bondage. This was the new David and the establishment of a new kingdom of Israel. All of that poured out in this moment. We have all these stories in our heads. We have all these events in our heads and over the years that they have become pageants and spectacles and and, and stage productions. But these people just were desperate to help. They needed the man that they had heard about, the guy everyone was talking about, to see them, to hear them, to know their struggle and pain and to save them. It wasn't a parade. It it was a mob. A spontaneous, collective outpouring of an extreme emotion. A mob. So we've been through uh, secret meetings with Jesus in the middle of the night. We've been through isolated conversations at the town's well. We've been through questions among the disciples about theology that have that have led to the healing of, of the blind man. All of these isolated and localized moments. This is, this is all unhinged, uncontrolled, uncontrollable emotion and passion and hope and joy and fear and need. And that's why it was so frightening to the leaders. You know that the men uh, involved in the Boston Tea Party had just left a meeting about the tea tax and went to the docks and did the Boston Tea Party. There seems to be some arrangement, but it it wasn't mapped out. It wasn't planned. It wasn't designed. It wasn't like they had six months of preparation. They were sitting there in another ineffectual government meeting They realized that nothing was going to change in that meeting since the actual, the the people who owned the tea ships were actually a part of the decision-making process. 
And they left that city council meeting, a little bit bigger than that, and went straight to the docks and poured all the tea in the water. The, mar the march on Washington was certainly obviously planned, meticulously but Rosa Parks just didn't want to get up. It was a decision made in that moment that I can no longer hold back this emotion, this joy, this fear, this... I, I'm just, my feet are tired, and I'm not getting up. Some of the biggest shifts in our history can be brought back to something spontaneous. A decision made in the moment. An emotion that could no longer be held back. And that last straw fell into place. And the moment happened. We could talk for a long time, a time about Jesus' preparation for this moment. But for us, for the crowd, for the people of Jerusalem, this thing just happened. They didn't wake up that morning and know because they, it had been announced in the news that Jesus was going to come this week. It was a spontaneous moment. The triumphal entry of Jesus. The triumphal takes on a sardonic tone later in the week. So dozens of people are coming down that hill that's still a hill, that's still a road, that's still the, the entrance from the east into Jerusalem, shouting, save us, shouting, the king is here, surrounding and following this, this man from the backwater of Galilee up north in fishing land fishing countryside where nothing good can come from riding on a donkey's foal you can't help but imagine to, to, to picture other arrivals to Jerusalem, other processions into Jerusalem we don't have texts in the scripture about this but we have archaeological te texts from other entrances of the Roman Empire the Roman appointed governor Pontius Pilate, sent as the representative of the empire, arriving in Jerusalem to take charge, take up residence in the capital building built by the people of Israel for the kingdom of Israel. More than likely, Pontius Pilate is surrounded by soldiers. More than likely, these soldiers, at least some of them, are mounted on great stolen Arabian horses. He's coming he's coming in, Pilate's coming in like like Prince Abu from Aladdin. Right? Elephants and horns and spectacles and, and as big as you can possibly imagine. Probably, according to other events that we have evidence of, Pilate was either came to town either inside a, uh, a, a carriage hidden from the people, separated from the people, protected from the people, because they, they can't, how dare they lay eyes on Pontius Pilate, or he was the highest thing in the procession. The arrival of guys like Pilate to town was all about wealth and status and hierarchy and power. Look how high I am above you. Look how much more I have than you. These were messages to the people. Palm Sunday is a message from the people. Palm Sunday became a statement, a, a march, a demonstration. Palm Sunday became a protest. Emotions that could no longer be held back. We choose Him. 
Y'all have had your chance, Caiaphas. You've gotten nowhere. Nothing but the status quo has remained and keeps us in our place and powerless and voiceless. Well, hear, hear our voices now. We choose him. If there was a statue of Caesar in the town square, which there wasn't, but these people would have torn it down. That's Palm Sunday. So most, most of you all know this. Uh, uh, one of the things I think that we do too much is, is try to pull individualized, personal, life-applicable messages out of scriptures that were never meant to be read that way. And a lot of scripture is intended to do that, absolutely. Proverbs and the letters to Paul and the commandments of the Torah and the sermons of Jesus, those are all do this, don't do this, live like this, don't live like this. And the temptation for us is to find directly applicable meaning to every passage of scripture we ever read. The depiction of the story of Palm Sunday was not written ever to tell anyone how they should behave on a Tuesday afternoon. It's not the kind of story it is. We seem reluctant to just let stories be stories. So, I mean, I could, we, I could say something like, like which palm, what palm branches of your heart are you willing to lay down at Jesus' feet? I've said that before. But it's, that's disingenuous reading of the passage. We're just going to let this story be, it be the story. Because it, without the metaphor, Palm Sunday brings up questions. What messages could we send if we could no longer or would no longer hold back our emotional outpouring? Do our encounters with Jesus, room full of Methodists, Elicit this kind of unbridled emotional response? Do our encounters with Jesus elicit this kind of uncontrollable emotional outpouring? What would it mean to our community if we looked the empires of oppression in the eye and said, your time is over. We've had enough. You've had your chance. We choose a different way. We choose him. We choose to follow Jesus. Amen. We're going to gather together now and worship God with the presentation of our tithes and our offerings. We give you thanks. Uh, for your continued generosity and support uh, of the ministries of this place, however we receive it. Uh, thank you for the automatic pays and the uh, direct deposits and the, uh, the checks that come our way. We give you thanks. Uh, we're still going to pass the plates because it's an act of worship. Uh, because whatever we have on us, uh, we can lay down and say, uh, say use this, uh, God. We can lay down and say, uh, thank you, God. We can use this as an act of worship just like our prayers and just like our song. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, a couple people to join Eugene uh, and get these plates uh, passed around as we worship God. Jim, give me the lick real quick. There it is. One. Two. 
Uh, so I did invite my uh, my brother, Reverend Andy Bryan, the pastor of Manchester United Methodist Church, who has who played uh, Pontius Pilate uh, in the Springfield Little Theater production of Jesus Christ Superstar. If he would come Friday night and just count to 49 for us, uh, just just count to 39 for us, uh, which is the flogging scene of Jesus Christ Superstar over that riff. Uh, he was he was busy that night. Um, so won't be joining us. We're gathered for worship uh, this Thursday night uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, for our communion service on Monday, Thursday. We gather Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, for uh, our uh, tenebrae service of darkness and crucifixion and uh, the Good Friday service. As a part of Good Friday service, we will invite you all uh, because uh, our folks are taking Easter vacations and spring breaks and all that stuff. We're going to have a hanging of the whites uh, after or as a part of our Good Friday service. Uh, so we're going to start the service on Friday night in red and black. Uh, and then we are together uh, going to get our white and our gold up uh, before, uh, before Sunday morning. Uh, so we worship uh, this Thursday night at 7 p.m. And we worship this Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, and then uh, Easter Sunday morning uh, together next, next week. Uh, let us stand and sing our doxology this morning, hymn number 95. Praise God from whom all blessings Almighty God, we thank you for this time that we have shared together in fellowship and in, uh, in good breakfast and in good worship and conversation. We give you thanks in and through these gifts and all that they represent. And we pray that uh, we live our response, we live our uh, generosity and our giving as we are sent from this place to serve uh, and to be your people and do your work. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And since this morning we recognize that the King is here, we will sing our closing hymn uh, this morning. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. And now may the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ be with you in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Sing after us. May the Lord bless you.
and as we part ways, and as we part ways, may you know God's grace, may you know God's grace, with love everlasting, with love everlasting, keep you strong, keep you strong, to God be the glory forever and ever, forever and ever, amen, to God be the glory. To a home on God's celestial soul, I fly 